Hello and welcome back. I'm Adam Knightley and with help from Seamus Johnson we present to you a brand new tutorial of these balls. So first we're going to start off by going to object and making a sphere. Then we go ahead and make it small. Next we go to MoGraph and make a cloner. Put the sphere inside the cloner. And then we're going to change the mode to grid array. Then we change the count to 7, 9, and 17. And now spread them. As anyone can tell you, anytime your balls touch, it is unpleasant for all parties involved. And basically you just keep at it until basically you have this large cube shape full of... Yeah. Okay, very next thing we have to do is make a container for all these to hold them, or cradle them. So we start off by making a cube and stretching it out. And once we got it to an appropriate size, we drag it to the bottom. Fix it up a little bit more. Now you tap the C key to make it so you can edit this object. Then you hit the polygon tool and select the top and delete it. This makes the container. I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this a little more. Move it again. So make a new material and then you double click it. Once it's open, turn off specular and in color go to texture, surfaces, and select checkerboard. Then you change the U frequency to zero, leave the V frequency at one, and then you change the black color to red, or any color you prefer. Turn on reflection, go to texture, and choose for now. Turn the brightness down to 5% and the mix strength to 21%. And drag the newly made material right into the sphere. Next, change tiles U and V both to 4. This gives your balls 4 stripes, and then you drag the sphere into the cloner again. Next, for some variety, we're going to add a few different colors. We're going to do this by command clicking and dragging the first material that we made, going up to color, clicking the color, and just changing it to whatever you want. We decided to go with orange. Then you just repeat the process over and over again until you get as many as you want. We stopped at five. Now that our colors are made, we have to add individual spheres for each color. So we go ahead and duplicate three more, and then drag them right into the cloner. Then we just add each color to each sphere. And voila, some of the most beautiful balls I've ever seen. And in your object menu, make sure your clones are switched to random. Next, go to simulation tags and choose rigid body. Then we go to the inherit tag and switch from none to apply tag to children. Go to individual elements and select all. Right click the cube, go to simulation tags, choose rigid body again. Now change the shape to static mesh. And now for a quick example of your balls exploding. That is not what we want, so we have to go back and spread them out a little more. Make sure your cloner is selected when you do so, so you don't mess anything else up. Hit this little play button, and it will very slowly distribute them. So we're moving around here and you can see what everything looks like. Basically just find a spot that you really like that you can use for the still frame image. This next thing we're going to add is going to make it a little easier for us to control the sky and what it's called is Studio 18 HDRI Studio Pack. We will include a link to that below. So once you click it, hit the little ellipsy bar and it'll let you find the actual file to select and bring it in. Now let's just change the frame rate from 90 to 200. Go ahead and play that again. Things will redistribute a little more. Now we need to add a camera. Change the focal length to 80. Go ahead and pull out a little bit. Insert laugh here. And again, we're just moving around 
find that perfect point for the still frame. Now that we're almost done, we need to add a little light to it, a little glossy look. So we need to make a new material, or you can just duplicate one like I did. Turn off the color and reflection and turn on the luminance. Then drag that new material onto the cube. Now we need to render it out, so render standard effect global illumination. Change the mode to IR plus QMC still image. Go to the irradiance cache, this stochastic samples to low. Lock the ratio, change the width to about 1280. Then go to multi-pass and select depth. Check it. And then choose where you want it to save. Save as render two. Then we go to the multi-pass image. And uh, for a bit of poetry, saved it as depth of my balls. Once that's all been decided, you just have to go ahead and hit the render button. And once it has rendered out, go ahead and drag it into After Effects. So now we're in After Effects, we have all of our renders here. So we drag the file Depth of My Balls on top of our Balls render. Go ahead and pre-compose that file. Now we're going to add a fill, so go ahead, click it, and drag it on. Change the color from red to white. Next, make a new solid, and we chose to leave it black. Go ahead and drag it under your Depth of My Balls file. Then we go to the previous composition. Choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Next, you go to your effect, go to the word I can't pronounce, and choose the FL Depth of Field. Now in the Effects panel, go to Depth Layer and make sure the Depth of My Balls composition is selected. Bring the select depth into the composition and pick a spot where the gray starts to look more white. Turn off the depth of my ball's composition. Change the radius to about 50. And there's a depth of field effect, but it's not quite what we want. So we're going to do the select depth, put it onto this pink ball right here, and that looks much better. Now, we make another adjustment layer. Now for the rest of what we have to do, it will be a lot easier if we go ahead and drag our resolution down to half. Just like that. Okay, now we drag a curves effect onto the new adjustment layer. Make an S curve that brings the color out a little more into this. We don't want them looking too washed out. So now, we add a tint. Drag it onto the same adjustment layer. We change the amount to about 10%. Now seeing this, the color is a little warm, so we're going to go ahead and change the curve channel to blue. Bring the shadows up. And turn the highlights down. Bring the shadows up a little more. And that should be good. Okay, now we have to make a new composition. In this new composition, we're going to change the width to 960 and change the height to 360 pixels, mind you. Go ahead and drag the Render 2 composition in, scale it down, move it a little bit so you get the depth of field into it, and to finish it off we're going to kick up the resolution. And we're done! Right now we have some glorious globes, or some baffling balls, ORGASMIC ORBS! And that is it for us today. We'd like to go ahead and give a shout out to this guy. I cannot pronounce that, but he was the only person to leave a comment. I am sure you are an incredibly beautiful person and totally not some dude in his mother's basement. Uh, to everybody else, please feel free to like and subscribe or, uh, you know, bitch about it in the comments section. And we'll see you again later.